What's up, man? Hey, Rob, how are you? It's going good. I woke up, so I can't complain. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, so um, I want to make sure that this session is as valuable as possible. But before we get into that, man, um, how's life been in 2023? I have to say definitely been good can't complain i can definitely know that for me this is going to be a year of evolution and transition so it's kind of give a brief spark of what's been going on with me this year for one i turned 30 in february so all right all right big three oh yes sir so i'm like okay how do i want the next decade to pan out for myself so that's something i've been very introspective about and then Listen to that. Like I mentioned in the notes, I had my business and I actually secured my first consulting opportunity within my business in December. That's awesome. And I would say I was looking at the numbers for the first half of this year and look like I'm clearing 60K on the year. <laughs> awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Now, uh, as far as the consulting thing, right? Because, um, I do the same thing. So what do you think about the overall? Was it easier than you thought it was going to be? Harder? What did that look like? Okay, I would say for me it was easier than I thought it would be. Cause yep. <laughs> you billion voices saying you need to do this, that, and third. But I say as far as my business go, I had set up my LLC in 2021. So I wanted to make sure I had the structure and all the administrative stuff set up pretty well, as well as my accounting. And then I have a CTA in my corner who's been helpful every step of the way. So I was in a great position once I did get my first opportunity. So now I, I'm one of the system set in place. That's going pretty good, but now I want to think about how can I scale it? Because right now it's only me. Right. So now I'm thinking about, okay, if I'm going to be able to get more opportunities, I'm going to have to get some more hands in the pot. So now trying to think what do I need to do on my end in order to be able to get more hands to go into the pot to be able to get yeah, more opportunities. Got you, got you. So um, that's the first uh, gem I'll give you, even though you know that's may have not been one of the things that when you were looking for, I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So when it comes to scaling, right? One of the easiest things, one of the best things that's gonna save you is uh, systems and processes. So one of the easiest ways to create a system and a process, since you're doing everything right, you know all the systems and processes. So uh, when I first started consulting, when I first started hiring employees, right, um, as a solopreneur, you're doing everything front to back, your customer service, your um, admin, your finance, your every department. So how do I make um, processes? How do I make systems? How do I make SOPs? Real simple. When you're doing something, record yourself, right? So if you're structuring a deal, if you're knocking stuff out, literally, um, all you have to do, um, I use something called loom. All you have to do is record your screen, or if it's just some physical you got to do, just record yourself. And by the time I started hiring people, I literally had basically a training manual for them, right? Um, and I, you know, you gotta have your KPIs, you gotta have your key performance indicators uh, to know if somebody is valuable, if they're doing what they need to do. Uh, but the easiest thing I'm telling you is gonna save you a ton of time is start making those SOPs. Start recording the stuff that you do. You do a lot of stuff during the day, and I already know that, whatever it is. Um, and I would say start small, the first person uh, that I actually hired was a was an assistant, right? Um, they kind of was a little bit of everything, but it wasn't a lot of heavy lifting on them because I had that training manual, right? So it was basically I hired them and say, hey, I got you know however many hours of content I need you to watch, watch this. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Then let them start rocking out. You know, if they had any uh, issues or stuff wasn't going right, that's what I did. But I would say that's that's the first thing that you need to do as far as scaling is you gotta have um, key performance indicators and you gotta have SOPs because it's a lot of times uh, when you start hiring people, 
Uh, you may think that they suck. You may think that they're lazy, but you as a leader didn't really show them exactly what they needed to do. You didn't show them what success looks like. Mine's is in black and white. Uh, here's a video of me doing it. And this is what I expect you to do. So it's kind of um, no excuses uh, that come from that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Got you. Yeah, I'm actually familiar with Loom, but I never thought about that. Like, see that if I'm creating content, but instead of throwing it on YouTube or whatever platform, I can kind of just have that off. Mm -hmm. Just use that, like you said, a digital name for stuff. Yep, yep. And that way it kind of, like I said, you're actually walking them through it. And um, when you're doing it, I literally um, turn the mic on. You don't even got to be on the camera. Um, most of the stuff they need to do is right there on the screen to say, hey, first I do this, then I do this, then I do this, then I do this. And then either transcribe it or write out the actual steps. And it's kind of like um, it'll make things smoother and they won't have to keep on running back to you because you know my guys and my girls um you know on my team that help me it's just always they already know rob is going to tell me the same thing go look at the manual or go look at the drive so they look at the drive and if it's something that's another thing it can it needs to be a uh, dynamic right so um since you're kind of moving away from that since you're not doing the day-to-day -day stuff you will have them start updating stuff like if you see something that's out of out of date or something that doesn't make sense anymore because things have changed you just re-record it and then upload it um, for the next person um, and a lot of times that just makes stuff so much smoother and it kind of takes out of the headaches and the extra meetings and all that type of stuff um, now one thing i will say is i'm just going to come a time because like these um a coaching calls that I'm doing, I'm, you know, at the kind of at the point where I'm trying to figure out, should I be doing these? Should I not do them? So on and so forth, just because, you know, time uh, is such a precious commodity. But as far as the consulting part, man, or just, you know, scaling, if you hire, if you're looking for a team, um, if they fail, it's going to be on you. And um, to lessen that failure or lessen that headache, for sure, start making those um, SOPs and those manuals. like today uh so if you're doing stuff whatever you're doing just it's real simple and you ain't got to use loom you know i ain't a, a damn affiliate or nothing but um just use some kind of screen recording and if it's something physical you got to do literally record yourself so that takes out any confusion um because you know sometimes you know i use contractors from overseas sometimes i use people from here sometimes i use people from all types of places so it's pretty no matter the language barrier no matter where you're from education level i'm literally showing you how to do it so it should take you know some of that stuff um, out of there then another thing is if you know that you recorded it you got do this do this do that and they still not getting it then that's probably not a person that need to be on your team if that makes sense yeah actually, so you want to be able to take as many excuses off your plate to be able to further diagnose is it an issue with them or is it the issue of me if i being an effective communicator that's right that's right because a lot of times i always look at myself first um you know if uh, my guys or my girls fail like okay um that i effectively communicate that i give them the tools necessary to be successful and if all that is yes it was them <laughs> so then you just got to move on from there now you know i wouldn't say just completely ask them off the off the rip but kind of tell them like hey this is what the expectation is and that's another thing um you know that'll save you some heartache as well because um, i've been doing this for um, some years is i would say um hire slowly but fire super quick um so Sometimes I kept people on for a little bit too long because, OK, they got a family, they got a this, they got a that. But it's like, OK, don't they know that, too? So they should be, um, you know, kind of being on top of their game and kind of doing what I tell them to do. So um, hire super slow. OK, are you good? And kind of have them from the jump from the get go know exactly what you expect. Right. Because a lot of times people. Uh, say they got lazy workers or they got lazy employees or your team is lazy. But a lot of times it's because you were lazy as a leader. Um, some people aren't self starters. Some people aren't um, going to go outside the box. If you say, hey, I just need you to organize this paperwork, they're going to organize that paperwork and then they're going to sit down for the next eight hours. That's it. So you got to kind of, OK, if you ain't got nothing to do, I'm going to expect you to do this. I'm going to expect you to do that. Um, and, you know, that'll save you. Trust me. Trust me, because I had a bunch of headaches. That'll save you a bunch of headaches if you. Um, if you had that stuff in place. Nah, um, 
I see what you got on, or what you filled out, but I just want to kind of let you guide the conversation uh, as far as, you know, what you want help with just so we hit that stuff. I um, uh, kind of drafted up um, some, some key points uh, that I think would be valuable for you, uh, but just um, in case, you know, things don't go as quickly um, as we want them to, I'd rather you guide the conversation as far as what you, what you were looking for uh, help with. Wanted to be able to kind of break it down to like two different subjects. So, where I kind of alluded to as far as my consulting goes, that's something that, like I said, I've been in business for two years, but I just landed my first opportunity in December. So, that should be wrapping up come October. Okay. And alongside with that, I've been in IT for about six years now, was able to make the pivot into the field right out of college. Awesome. Because my Degree not even in anything computer related. My degree is in public administration, so that deal with poli sci, public policy, things of that nature. Wow. Okay. But yeah, so I'll be able to get my first opportunity just to give a quick story with that. One of my classmates, an undergrad, he was actually an IT manager at a nearby hospital. So me and him was able to build rapport throughout the semester. Then he approached me near the end of the semester, was like, "Hey, I know you want to get into the field." I'm actually looking for an intern, which would be interested. Uh, I accepted that. Did that for about a year. I was doing everything from help desk, desktop support, getting down and dirty on all the bare bases as far as IT goes. Okay. And once I was able to do that, I was able to move into becoming a lead deployment tech. I was working at a local hospital where they brought out another regional hospital and it was starting to merge so they were doing an the epic migration so i had a team of 12 that i was leading across three different work sites awesome so i got able to get a bit of project management experience doing that and then from there i went over to another hospital which in this case was university of pennsylvania so they have their enterprise is huge so they cover most of the metro Philadelphia area where I'm based down to currently. Okay. So I did everything from desktop support to PG deployment, the whole bit. And then I was there during the first, during the beginning of the pandemic. So that was pretty interesting as well. But we had a bunch of emergency deployments to do for that as far as getting extra workstations and extra nurse stations set up because they were preparing for a possible influx of people during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that was some good experience I got from there. Then once I completed the projects over there, I went over to PayPal and I was doing system admin work for them for about a year. And during there, I was also able to do training because we were able to bring on contractors over there as well to help facilitate the PPP loans that they were doing over there. So mm. I was able to get more opportunity to be able to train end users doing that. And then that leads up to my current role now, where I work for a defense contract. I'm currently doing a project with Army, where we were doing a cloud migration. We was migrating their website and their business application over to Azure. Gotcha. Yep. So I'm currently a cloud admin. We're pretty much in the sustainment phase. So what we're doing now is pretty much doing maintenance and optimization of the environment. So I do everything from I don't know if you, I know you're a prior military, so I know you're familiar with doing stings, items, things of that nature. Mm hmm Yep. Yep. So that's what my day to day consists of. But to kind of lead into my initial question, so we had a meeting Thursday regarding the status of our contract. So we just got word that there was a another eight eight company that outbidded the current prime we were working with for the contract. Mm. Okay. So now, at the end of September, that's going to be the end of our task order now. So right now, our sub is kind of trying to divide the game plan as far as what our next steps. Are they able to partner with this new prime, or are they going to start moving people to different projects? So all that stuff is pretty ambiguous at the moment. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm kind of putting together my own game plan as far as currently evaluating my current skill set and kind of just throw my resume out there seeing what the market is like for myself and I've been getting some pretty positive feedback. So this is something that 
I'm have to consider on my ass for it, possibly jumping shit because I know if I were to jump ship, I would make probably significantly more. Mm -hmm. But that being said, they said they want to be kind of lay out some options on their side because they said if they were to partner, we would get first right to refuse. So they said, hey, we got room on our team. We want to come over and they'll give us the right to either accept and just keep the work on or to kind of decline and go about and seek other opportunities. Got you. That kind of then ties into my second question where I've asked you when you to play as far as what more I can do to kind of take what I'm doing to the next level. So that's why I've been exploring the option of going on to grad school. Mm -hmm. I've been pursuing an MBA with an emphasis IT management or cybersecurity. And then another uh, option to that would be continue to scale up, scale up rather and pursue a more advanced or like a CISSP. So those two particular emphasis are kind of tied together because I know if I were to go on and move on to another job, more than likely I'd be pursuing a job that not only had more of a growth projection, but also have a more robust tuition assistance program from seriously going to consider grad school because to be transparent, I'm adding them up, not going back to the student debt. I paid off all my undergrad, all that gone. So my man, I'm to try to keep it that way. <laughs> That's right. Now, uh, the good thing, Darnell, is you had a lot of opportunities, and I think whichever direction you go is going to be, you know, upward trajectory. So, um, I'll kind of give you both paths, I guess, and kind of, you know, kind of be up to you. Uh, to decide, you know, which would be best for what you're trying to do and just, you know, just some personal stuff. So me personally, I can't say um, for you, but me personally, you know, I have a, a MBA. It wasn't necessarily for or it wasn't. It wasn't for my job or uh, to get more opportunities. It was more a legacy thing. Uh, you know, nobody in my family has an MBA. So that was kind of one of the reasons why I went after an MBA myself. As far as um, you go, um, I'm not sure if an MBA would really be um, the fuel or, you know, the gas or the shortcut or, you know, the fastest way to get to where uh, you're trying to get to, especially since I would say if you hadn't had any uh, leadership experience, but you already had leadership experience, you was rocking out the help desk and you moved up and then you had people underneath you, you already had that leadership um, experience. And I would say with your experience already, you've been worked at all these different places, you got all these different skills, that would be a reason to get your MBA in IT is if you didn't have that experience, if you hadn't had no leadership role, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of jobs would be like, well, you gotta have you know, a master's degree, but your experience, believe it or not, would be more valuable, I think, than um, an MBA. Now, um, you may be thinking, Okay, well, you know, MBA, it'll help me with, um, you know, managing uh, the consulting stuff. Uh, you know, if I want to, you know, go full entrepreneur, if I want to do this business thing, I'm 100%. That may help me that way. Um, I can't agree, to be honest. Um, for me, what helped me uh, the best as far as uh, my business goes is what you're doing actually doing it, um, the practical experience, actually doing it, the tactics. Um, trust me, uh, I've learned more in my business than um, when I was going through my MBA. And another thing that was, uh, you know, I won't name the school or anything, but one of the biggest things that kind of made me like, hmm, when I was in my MBA program, a lot of the professors, um, they were missing a critical ingredient to me uh, to be um, a business professor and that was they didn't have a business um, they were literally yeah that was I can't say you know for yours hopefully you know if you do decide to uh, go through a program because I guess a lot of people don't think to ask that you know we were rocking out in class um, I think it was it, was, it might have been a finance class or something um, and I just okay what business do you have and, so, and he's like I don't have a business I said oh okay then I asked my next professor same thing I, the next one the next one none of them had a business I was just like this what this don't even <laughs> don't even make sense but um, I think for me uh, and just in general um, just being around other business owners and 
actually having a business is the biggest thing. Uh, I learned more from other business owners, from other you know mentors and stuff like that than I did in my M, uh, MBA. Um, now, like I said, it's, it's some certain frameworks and stuff like that. And then some of the stuff that they talk about um, is antiquated uh, as far as, you know, how businesses run, uh, whether it's advertising, marketing, structure, so on and so forth. Um, so uh, that's one thing that you need to, to really do is if you do decide to um, get your MBA, definitely look at the school. Now, the school was awesome. It was great. Fantastic. But as far as uh, if my goal was I'm getting an MBA to further my career. I'm going to MBA to show me how a business is really ran, this type of stuff. Uh, not so much. It looks cool. I'm not going to lie on a piece of paper. Oh, I got my master's. I got an MBA, blah, blah, blah. But um, if your ultimate goal is to, to really le uh, level up and scale up, whether that's personally or um, in your business, I'm just not sure. At least for me, uh, MBA uh, was definitely not, uh, didn't add any fuel uh, to my fire, just to be honest, because um, I actually my business was already uh, booming. Yeah, my business was already booming. By the time I got my MBA, it was all right. You know, had the structure. Uh, I was already paying, you know, paying taxes on, you know, for um, for my business. Uh, by the time I got uh, my MBA, so you know, you just kind of just got to do uh, a self assessment. Uh, on your own, you know, kind of evaluate your, your long term career goals, your interests and your aspirations and then determine whether, you know, you're more inclined towards, you know, academic path or um, that certification. And then, like I was saying, just make sure you do some serious research on um, the master's degree programs, um, kind of talk to people that's been through the program already. Um, how are the instructors? Um, and the main thing. How did this help you in your business? And like I said, a lot of times you're gonna run across MBAs. They don't. They don't have a business. Uh, it's just like, hmm, okay. Um, whether it's um, instructors, uh, or excuse me, uh, professors or people, it's just like you have an MBA but you don't have a business. Now I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to have a business, but I think that would be. Um, an important ingredient and it seems like a lot of times like with the MBA you do have a like a capstone you know your major thing to graduate is usually something um, around business you know make a business profitable or whatever whatever that capstone event is but you know you're gonna run into a lot of MBAs that um, you know still work a job and that's nothing wrong with that but it's just kind of like okay if um, you know you I guess it'll help you I guess you know but if you're a uh, Aspirations are, you know, to be an entrepreneur. And just like I said, just for me uh, specifically, it, it did not uh, help me um, in my in my uh, entrepreneurial journey and then uh, my business. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And as far as the whole, some of the faculty not having business experience, I wholeheartedly agree. Because, like, I just had a very close friend of mine. She just finished with her MBA from Howard. Mm. And she said nobody... None of her professors have like actual practical business ownership experience. And then at far as her program, she said the most she got from it was the networking opportunity. And then like the opportunity that she got now post-grad was from networking. <laughs> so, See? I, and then as far as reaching out to different folks, you're probably like the 20th person I reached out to over the past month and a half. So I've kind of been throwing my stomp on the ground, jumping in some DMs, reaching out to people who even have one already or pursuing one currently, kind of get some insights from them. So that's how you kind of came to mind as well. Gotcha, gotcha. So I've been getting pretty good insights and opinions that I've been so far kind of getting a mixed bag, but it seemed like so far for the most part, a lot of people kind of, I'll say about 51, 49 about pursuing an MBA. So Pretty much half and half. Gotcha. And then as far as myself, as far as my aspirations, I kind of mapped it out. I already got a 10 year plan for myself. And ideally, I want to be able to eventually become a cloud security consultant. That's, so, that's awesome. I see as far as if I were to opt in, go the MBA route, I see as me being able to further expand my network as well to kind of just. Have a tool in my toolbox so nobody can say, Oh, I can't go into this opportunity because I don't have this. I'm like, Nah, nope. So I don't see it as far as myself going up the corporate ladder, but be able to further expand opportunities for myself. 
Got you, got you. Um, so, uh, like I said, just doing uh, research is, you know, one of the pivotal things because it's funny that you brought up uh, Howard. Um, so that's a HBCU. And I found out about last week. Do you know who Howard is named after? No. So believe it or not, Howard is named after Oliver Howard, a white general. Oh. Yeah, so that's interesting. So anyway, uh, so the pros and the cons, uh, I would say, um, to me, education is never a waste, right? Uh, and it's not like uh, you're a dummy if you go get your MBA. It's definitely not like that. Because the pros, I would say, you're definitely going to get you know, some in-depth knowledge uh, as far as a master's program provides like specific or comprehensive knowledge, I would say. Um, so it kind of allows you to to develop a certain level of expertise and depending on the school that you go to, you will have tremendous uh, networking opportunities and you'll be surrounded by a bunch of other people that's doing the same thing that you're doing. So, you know, interacting with uh, if the professors are really good, the other students and just having, you know, super valuable connections. Right. And for sure, like I said already, it will uh, if you're definitely going to stay in the, you know, the corporate world or um, as far as getting a gig, it'll definitely, you know, help you with getting those opportunities. But I, like I said, I think a lot of experience that you have would kind of make up for that um, MBA or that master's degree. I would definitely say if you was looking for more leadership positions and then have uh, leadership roles, I would say, yeah, you definitely need to get an MBA. So sure if you ever which i'm pretty sure you already know if you ever have the opportunity to be a project lead project manager in front of something uh, you definitely need to um, do that now as far as the cons which i'm pretty sure you already know the time commitment uh, for one it's a significant time investment it is not uh, going to be easy um, you know when i was going through my mba uh, it was was it pre or post COVID? I can't remember. I think it was post COVID, I think. Man, no, or during COVID, one of the two, I can't remember. But, um, you know, running a business, having a family, um, having that work life balance. And, like, even though, you know, the professors didn't have business experience, it was not easy. It was not easy <laughs> at all. Uh, another thing, uh, you said that you're, you know, kind of uh, out of debt, uh, which is, you know, one of those um, holes that's hard to get out of. Um, you know, depending on the degree program, the tuition, the fees can be, you know, pretty high. And one of the biggest cons, like I said, is just that practical experience, right? Um, I promise you, you know, a year from now, or two years from now, if you end up getting your MBA, you're like, yeah, Rob, uh, I learned way more running a business or doing consulting or shadowing business owners than I did um, in the actual uh, MBA program. So, um, you know, just with that, it would kind of be um, up to you. Now, if it's kind of like either or, I would definitely go with um, the CISSP uh, certification. I would knock that out um, as opposed to uh, getting your MBA. And then a good thing is, um, let's say that you uh, get the CISSP, you can always go to school later on. But I will say this, both of them, even though it's probably going to take a shorter time to achieve the CISSP, both of them, I would say, are equally difficult. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I got the study materials for the CISSP already, and I'm starting to take that quarter one next year because as of this year, the one that I'm targeting now is the Red Hat CSA. So I'm targeting to get that taken care of by the end of September again for my master program. And then, as far as what's on what first? I also received so let me let me let me let me stop you right there so um i know you said which is super important uh effective communication and being able to communicate to be honest darnell uh you don't have to necessarily go you know through uh, a program to come up with a business continuity plan to know how to effectively communicate and all this type of stuff a lot of times it's just getting in front of people right um so i was talking to um a client was it 
today no yesterday i was talking to um, a client uh, yesterday and he got his um, doctorate and was thinking about uh, going back getting another doctorate and it was kind of some of the same stuff okay the networking the, the uh, communication you know learning you know how to say this how to say that and i said a lot of times it's just the reps that's all it is a lot of times just the reps um, just like what you've been doing hopping in people's dms messaging people um, but in person as well uh, whether it's you're checking out at the grocery store, you know, make small talk with that person. What do you do? Uh, whether you, it's somebody working at your house, uh, somebody going to hook up the internet, what do you do? Somebody dropping off some furniture uh, through the drive through A lot of times it's just the reps and just becoming, you know, more personable. Um, and a lot of times with the reps, you build a lot of confidence, you know, just talking to people and then just, okay, this is just another human. <laughs> this is just another person. You know, it's not that uh, big of a deal. And then honestly, a lot of times just talking to people, you know, I've, uh, whether it's I've landed con uh, government contracts, I've um, found employees like um, the guy that um, uh, sold me uh, one of my cars. I end up, you know, hiring him as a salesperson. You know, it's just, uh, just a lot of times, just the network is just opening your mouth. To be honest, just talking to people, because um, business is tactics. There's certain best practices that you need to use. But what I found business and just in life, uh, leveling up, moving around, and stuff like that is relationships, right? Um, pretty much building relationships and fostering those relationships and nurturing those relationships, um, you know, and just having reciprocity. So uh, let me add value to Darnell and, you know, down the line, you know, if I need anything, hopefully, you know, if he got a contract, I can be a sub, I can be a prime, or, you know, he can tell me how to pass the CSSP, so on and so forth. Um, I think a lot of that you can get um, in other ways. Now, I will say this, you definitely going to need a community. You definitely going to need some mentorship uh, trying to go through this certification, right? So um, this certification is uh, really, 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 really hard. Um, and, you know, the, the length of time, you got to be in there for some hours. It's a bunch of different questions. Now, is it impossible? No, because people did it. But um, I have found that um, a lot of my coaching clients um, find that it's a lot easier when they have other people going through it because there's so much material, you know, am I studying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Um, and it's just so much more advanced than uh, Security Plus, uh, CA, CH, all that stuff is just, like I said, and one of the things is just the time. You're in there for hours trying to knock this damn um, exam um, out. So uh, just in general, whatever you're trying to do, uh, you already know, you know, community, relationships, um, and LinkedIn is a monster when it comes um, to that. Uh, and you've been doing the right thing, like you said, you know, reaching out to people, how's your MBA, have you used your MBA, so on and so forth. And hopefully you're doing the same thing when it comes to uh, this cert as well. Oh, yeah. I even reached out to someone that I was in another program with and she's offer to say, hey, if you pass it, I'm going to endorse you. There you have it. Boom. <laughs>